Good day, my Mati Baboon. We are back in our factorial walkthrough. And today we are continuing transitioning from our jumpstart base to the base that we are going to use for the remaining of the walkthrough. As a reminder for this base, we are going to shoot for 100 science per second. That's not going to be an easy task, but we are going to try our best. And in this episode in particular, we are going to look at producing copper plates, iron plates, iron gears and circuits. Before we get going, let's just have a review of the changes I made since the last episode. You can see that I extended our layout east, and I also removed any trace of vegetation. And if you are starting with that, if you think it really takes too much time for you to clear trees, now that we have finished military, let me show you how to do that in a very simple way. Instead of manually harvesting trees, you can simply build grenades and use that to clear trees. It's much more efficient, and yes, we don't get wood that way, but anyway, at that stage of the game, we are not going to use much wood anymore. So don't worry about that. Alright, so let's get going. As you can see, I already prepared two lanes of each ore, and we are going to start with iron. So let's take these two lanes, and let's bring them to the north of our base. To feed the furnaces, we we'll also need to take some coal. So we are going to drag these three lanes to the top. Something that I also did and that you will see when nights come by is that I added lamps through the base. You don't have to do that if you are not bothered by the darkness in the night. I just prefer to have more light in our base. And finally, the last thing that I did is that I greatly increased our iron and copper mining production so that it can support the smelting setup that we are going to build. And here we are not going to reinvent the wheel. What we are going to do is we are going to use exactly the same design as we used previously and we are going to scale it up. So let's take the recipe, press R to rotate it, and here the call is coming from the left, not the right, so let's press F to flip it, and let's place it here. If you remember, we have four lanes of iron plates on our bus, so I'm going to place four setups side by side, and the goal is going to have each one take a full belt of iron ore. At that stage of the game, I'm just going to build one, because we don't need that much iron, but as we go at some point, we are going to build the other ones too. So how much furnaces do we need to place so that the setup can take one full belt of iron ore? Let's calculate. Yellow belts can move up to 15 items per second, and each furnace is going to produce 0.313 plates per second. And if we divide 15 by 0.313, we roughly get 48 furnaces. So what that means is, if we want to produce a full belt of iron plates, we need to place 48 furnaces or 24 furnaces on each column. So let's go, let's copy the furnaces, and we are going to paste until we have 48 of them. So we already have 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and 48. And now let's assemble everything. We first start with the furnaces. I already prepared a bunch of them. So it's going to consume one belt and output one belt. In other words, the amount of resource consumed is the same as the amount of resources produced. Let's drag the belts. Let's connect the input. Let's now put the inserters. You will need a lot of them. And finally, we need to bring the power.
Great, seems to work well. Let's just double check. We do have 40 out of them. And now let's space the design. Great. So that's going to be the four lanes of iron plates. And what we need to do is just after the smelters, we are going to balance all the lanes. To do that, we are going to reuse the input and output balancer that I showed you in the last episode. Oops, no, that's not in the right place. So I'm just going to copy this balancer. If you are curious why we put a balancer just after the smelters, it's so that, let's say for example that one of the four belts of smelter have a supply issue, then you will be producing less plates on one side. And if you don't balance that out, that's going to cause issue further down the line, where some of the things you produce from copper plates are not going to be producing anymore at all. Whereas if you balance things, even if you have some issues on one lane, you are still going to produce less iron plates, right? However, the production decrease is going to be average on the four lanes, and that's going to cause much less trouble. And that's for the input, but it's the same thing for the output. If further down the line on the base, assemblers draw more on one belt than the other, things are still going to be average out here. Alright, let's drag the belts down to the bus. And you can see here that we are producing one full belt. I find that very satisfying. Alright, let's continue. And we are going to plug that to the bus. And when it's going to be plugged in, we are going to remove the lane that we had from the jumpstart base. Alright, looks good. Now we remove this belt. We do not need that anymore. And while we are here, I completely forgot, but we can start our next research. Let's see what we have. Let's start the military science pack. Producing these packs is going to be one of our next objectives in the next episode. Okay, just to clean things up, let me remove these underground belts here. And now that we have finished with iron, let's do the same thing, but with copper. So same thing, we have the two lanes here, I'm going to drag them to the south. Same thing with iron, we will also need coal. So we need to have a third lane here. Hmm, we don't have a lot of space here, it's a little cramped. So where am I going to take the coal from? Let's put a splitter here. So as you can start to see, you never have enough space in Factorio. If you start to think about a design and you start to prepare space for that design, just double that space because it's going to take more space than what you think. All right, so same thing here. We are going to reuse the same recipe. Let's rotate it and let's place it down. Okay. And it's going to be exactly the same thing with iron. So you know what, I'm going to speed up that part. There is nothing new to show here. And here we go, we have our design. But why don't we have coal here? Let's go up north to have a look. Okay, I just forgot to link up the two belts. Now we should be fine. So let's wait for the coal and we will see if it starts to produce copper plates. Meanwhile, what we can do is same thing with iron. We are going to put a balancer just out of the smelters. Same design, same thing. And we have cliffs just north, but uh, we should have enough space to build the balancer. 
Unfortunately, we will need to work around cliffs at the moment, so you cannot build on top of them, you cannot place any components on top of them. So you either need to go around them, or in our case, to bring back the copper plates to the bus, we are going to place underground belts. Later in the game, we are going to unlock some new components that will let us remove the cliffs. I can't wait to have that, but um, that's going to be in a while. Alright, so let's see how we are going to bring the copper plates to the other side of the cliffs. So we need to find horizontal cliffs. You can see if they are placed diagonally like that. We cannot place underground belts. So I can place one here, then one there, and then that should be fine. We can put three side by side here. And then north, let's just put fourth lane here so that it's aligned with the balancer. And let's connect everything. Alright, and now we just have to take these four lanes and put them back into the bus. And you can see, same thing than with iron, we are producing one full belt of copper. Let's also start our next research. We probably don't have to manually harvest resource anymore, but let's still research the steel axe. It will still help to have that if we want to remove some rocks. Something you will often see me do is putting underground belts on top of the stone bricks and it's because I would like to keep these stone bricks lanes clear of anything because it's going to be used for us to navigate the base. I would advise you to do the same and you will thank me later when we will start to have cars. Let's connect everything to the balancers and in fact we don't need these balancers anymore. I'm not going to remove them now, I'm probably going to remove them between this episode and the next one but because we put one just after the smelters and we don't take anything out of the lanes yet, they are really useless. Alright, with iron and copper smelting out of the way, we can start our next step and it's going to be producing iron gears. So same thing with the smelting, we are going to look at a setup that can produce one belt of iron gear. Producing iron gears is very easy, we just need iron plates. So we will have one lane here that will bring plates. We will have assemblers there. And then we will have one belt that takes the gears back to the bus. Because we want a full belt and inserters only drop items on one side of the belt, I'm also going to put an assembler on the other side, so that we have some kind of symmetry and that we deposit gears on both sides of the belt. Let's figure out our ratios. To have a full yellow belt, we need to produce more than 15 gears per second. Two assemblers are going to produce two gears per second. So if we divide 15 by two, of course we get 7.5. So to have one full belt, what we are going to do, we are going to round up to eight assemblers. So it's going to be eight on each column. So in total, it's going to be 16. Let's start to put eight here. And then let's copy that part and paste it on the other side. So I know for some people, this is going to be controversial. I mean, putting gears on the bus, because they are so easy to produce, a lot of people just prefer to produce them on the spot when they need them. And I think that putting gears on the bus is just going to waste space and make things more complicated. And hey, they are probably right. It's probably more optimized to not put the gears on the bus. But you know, when you play Factorio, there is not one right way. Everybody should play the game as they want. And I like to put gears on the bus, so that's what I'm going to do. So let's continue, now we need to place the inserters. If you do decide to put the gears on the bus, you will at least need two belts on the bus. One is probably not going to be enough. And finally, we just need to put power.
Now we need to put Pulse back to the bus. I tried to keep it out of the way, but it's not possible at the moment. We are going to unlock Medium Pulse soon. They have a bigger reach, and so we are going to replace that later. So now we need to take Aaron out of the bus. So to do that, we just place a splitter, and we need to do the same thing on the other side. And you can already see that we have a problem. Can you see it? The inserters that we are using are too slow. They cannot keep up with the assemblers. So to solve that issue, you already know what to do, right? Yep, we need to use fast inserters. You can see the rotation speed is 864 degrees per second. I think it's more than two times the rotational speed of the inserters. So while you are producing them, let's connect the other belt. I don't want to take the plates from the same belt on the bus. I'm going to take it from the second one. And this is to not completely dry up the first one. So to do that, it's not too complicated. We can just put an underground belt and put the splitters just after. And we have iron plates for the other side of the assemblers. All right, now we have a few fast inserters. So let's replace the inserters with them and let's have a look to see if they can keep up. That's much better, right? Okay, and now what we need to do is take back the gears back to the bus. So we are going to use underground belt to go to the other side of the bus. We are going to keep two space between the copper plates and the gears. And we now have the gears on the bus. Let's finish to drag the belt. And now, as we said, we are going to need two belts of gears. So because we have some space behind what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. Mm, I think it's a little too close. Let's place it up north. Here should be fine. And so we'll have the gears out of here and then we will bring them back to the bus. Let's see, this way and this way. Mm, here there is a splitter, that's not ideal. Let's bring it back to the bus just one tile west. That's a little better. And now we just have to drag the belt next to the other one. We then place a splitter. This is to balance between the two lanes. And that's it. We have our gears. And I think it should be enough for most of the walkthrough. Let's continue to drag the gears. All right. And now we are ready for the next step and it's going to be producing green circuits. So it's going to be the same thing. We want to make a design that can output one full yellow belt of green circuits. And as a reminder for green circuit, what we need, we will need copper plates to produce copper cables. We produce copper cables on the spot because it's just more efficient. And so we place one belt here to take the copper plates and then we'll have three assemblers to produce the copper cables. And then they will direct fit the copper cables into two assemblers that will produce green circuits. And you might wonder why we put three copper cables and two green circuits. It's just the best ratio. You can see three assemblers are going to produce six copper cables per second. And the two assemblers for green circuits are going to require six copper cables per second. So now let's just put the assemblers. So here the specificity is that the copper cable assembler in the middle is going to direct feed both of the green circuits assemblers. And then finally, we will need two assemblers that will take iron plates in. This belt will take circuits out. Then we'll have two belts to take iron plates in. We then need long inserters to take circuits back to the belt. We have two belts for iron plates. We are going to use exactly the same design, flip it and put it on the other side. So now let's start to connect the inputs. I first place the underground belts. Then that's going to be the one that take the circuits back. By the way, by pressing R, you can flip the underground belts. And same thing with splitters, you can also flip them by pressing R. Let's put some poles to bring power. And that should be it. We just need to connect the input now. So as I said, I'm going to copy that flip it and place it on the other side. Great, let's assemble it.
All right, we just need to connect the inputs and we should be good. I need more splitters and let's start to connect them. The lamp and the pole is in the middle, let's remove them. The circuits are going to be just next to the gears and it's going to be the same with the gears. I will want to have two belts of circuits. Same with the gears, we will need a lot of green circuits through the game. Hmm, I didn't place it in the right place. Let's remove it and put it back. It needs to be just next to the gears. And for the moment, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to one splitter like that so that we have circuits on the two belts. But we are not going to produce 30 circuits per second today. That will be completely overkill for the moment. But I still put two lanes just to remember that we will need these two lanes later. Now that we have built the fast inserters, let's replace it for the gears. And wait a moment, what did I do? Your French baboon is completely brain dead today. That's not the lane for the copper plates, that's the lane for the iron plates. So let's remove the copper and let's replace it with iron. So we already draw gears from the first and second belt. So here what I'm going to do is take it from the third belt. Let's put some underground belts. Great, and now for the other iron plate belt, we are going to take it from the last one, the fourth belt. So we need a splitter here, and then same thing, we are going to place underground belts. And wait a moment, that's going to be an issue here. And no, you know what, that's going to be okay. We just need to take the underground belt from the second and first lane for the east. Great, now we have iron on the other side. And now the last thing we need to do is just to take the copper. We are going to take it from the first belt here. And then from the second belt here. And now it should start to produce circuits. And why it's not? What is wrong? Let's have a look. It's producing cables and it's not producing circuits. Oh, I see. It's because the inserters for the iron plates were on the wrong side. So now it's starting to produce circuits. But you can see that we are going to have a similar problem with the gears. And that is that the inserters are too slow. So same thing with the gears. I'm going to replace them with fast inserters. I need to replace these ones. And now let's have a look. Do they take copper plates fast enough? Nope, it seems not. So same thing, we replace them. I need to produce more of them. And I think for the iron plates it should be fine. We don't need to replace them, they are fast enough. Okay, now we should be fine. So remember, we said that we want to produce one full belt and we are not quite there yet. We need to scale that up. So let's see how much we produce. At full speed, it's going to produce four circuits per second. So to arrive to 15 or more circuits per second, 
we need to copy that design and paste it four times. We have a cliff a little up, so I'm not going to be able to build everything yet, but that's okay, I just want to place it now and we can build it later. And all right, we now have iron plates, copper plates, iron gears and circuits all scaled up and we probably don't need to worry about these for the remainder of the playthrough. And with that, my friend, that's going to be it for today. In the next episode, we are going to breed again red and green science, but this time that's not going to be the same. The throughput will be much higher. The goal is going to have a design that can produce 100 per minute of green and red science packs. And you will see once we have that, our research speed is going to be lining fast. I hope that you liked the video. If you liked one of my design and you don't want to recreate it and just take it, there will be a link in the description with all the recipes that are used in the walkthrough. And don't forget to add a like or subscribe if you want to see more Factorio content. And see ya!